Yaranda and Philoke, thank you for everything we have done in Fiji. All the children in Sawin, they are waiting for you. Church, home, a hall. So this is what you have created for us all. And thank you for everything that you made for us. With your blessing, Yaronda, I hope that you will have a good day and be safe and have a good life. And always pray for us and we will pray for you. With your blessing, Yaronda, we all miss you and love you. Many Lotoka, dear Yoranda Amphilokius, while you were here, you always brought happiness to us all. We all thank you for the love you gave us. I hope you get well and healthy so that you can visit us in Fiji. When the Holy Metropolis of New Zealand was established in 1970, its jurisdiction extended to include parts of Asia. That has changed over time, and after His Eminence Metropolitan Amphilochius was appointed in 2005, the Ecumenical Patriarchate gave him the responsibility to share the Greek Orthodox faith in the Pacific Islands of Fiji Tonga and Samoa. 
in the short period of time between 2005 and 2018, Metropolitan Amphilochios achieved more than is ever possible to imagine. αν υπήρχαν Έλληνες στα νησιά του νοτιοανατολικού ειρηνικού και αν θα ήθελα να πω εκεί να τους βοηθήσουν. Εγώ πάντα όταν πρόκειται περί Ιεραποστολής ενθουσιάζομαι. A fisher of men, of souls, that's what the bishop did. He, he literally, he did that. He'd just walk and meet people and they'd be drawn to him. Well, that's, that's a gift from God, I think. There were some Hellenes, but with a catastrophe that had happened, they were afraid and left. Έμεινε ένα μόνο όταν πήγα βρήκα ένα στη Σούβα. Αλλά πάλι λέω μόνο οι Έλληνε είναι. Αυτοί οι άνθρωποι εδώ δεν δικαιούνται να γνωρίσουν την αληθινή εκκλησία. Πήρα μαζί μου την αδελφή Γαβριλία και την κυρία Μαρίνα από το Μαγκανούι και λέω τώρα τι θα γίνει εδώ. Δεν υπήρχε τίποτε. I was excited. I've, I'd never been to Fiji. When we went there, we knew absolutely no one. And I asked him, I said, what do we do? Where do we go? He said, leave it up to God. The people were very friendly. Uh, obviously at the beginning they didn't know who we were. They saw him with the beard, you know, the black hair. After a while, when we tell them we're Orthodox, when, when they see us again in town, they'd greet us and say, hello, Orthodox. Everything started as one big miracle. And uh, as the vision of and prayer of one man and his faith in God, He came here in Fiji in 2008, and that time he did no English, nothing. He couldn't speak a word. I was working in a in a shop. It was a very busy day. He was wearing black. It was very unusual. Then I said, I have to take blessing from this man. Either the God fed the second and divos, if the condalei epitrebet na rotiso, ti iste, ti sipame. Και τι σκέπτεστε να κάνετε εδώ, είπα και εγώ, το είχα πράγματι στο νου μου. Λέω, αγαπούμε τα ορφανά παιδιά, 
και σκεφτόμαστε αν μπορέσουμε να κάνουμε κάτι για αυτά τα παιδιά. That was the, the initial idea that was from the beginning uh, hope and uh, plan to have uh, orphanage established in Fiji. In the year 2015, the orphanage was established as Saint Abita Home in cooperation with the social welfare. Social welfare got involved, and so they started bringing children too. But we also took in children from parents who had a lot of difficulty raising their children, also from uh, broken backgrounds, where there's families where the, the alcoholic background or abuse, and we'd help them out. And one thing led to another, and it kind of molded its way on its own. We have 19 boys and six girls. All together we have 25 children. They have their own chores, they have to set their bed, they have to clean, they have their own duties. Individual, child has their own duty. Initially we started with mixed group of uh, boys and girls. Uh, uh, later on we understood that it's better that we have boys in the, in the children's home. The girls that are staying with us are basically in the monastery of the Dormition. We always wake up at uh, 5 o'clock, we do our prayer and we do some a bit of duties and then we help the sisters in their needs and then we get ready and we have breakfast and we go to school. It's whatever our around Samirani and Sister Anastasia told us to do. We do it, like uh, cutting the grass, cleaning the house, and doing all the stuff until it finishes. Then all the girls is to go down to the orphanage and help the kids uh, in their homeworks, especially in maths and English. Then in the school, it's about seven, eight hours in spending time in school. Then I walk, I have to walk back home because I like walking with my friends. So I usually walk back home, come, wash my uniform, have my break, tea break. Then if I have a lot of homework, then I do homework. I have only my mother. My father died the last year. When he died, I was really upset because I liked him more than anything. And six o'clock is we have Vespers. It's it's daily. So six to six thirty they're in the church. Uh, before three years, four years ago, we had a brother who came from Greece. His father Petros now, and he used to teach them Byzantine music. But they, but he never teach them uh, how to do the Vespers, the liturgy, of course, he teach them how to do in the Martins. The Vespers, they just speak by themselves because they are there, there every day for half an hour and don't know what is happening. Well, Yarandusa, she's close to me, same as Sister Nasia. Any problems, sister and your are always solved. They 
cared about me. They uh, looked after the kids and us. They sacrificed their lives in uh, taking care of the orphanage and the home. I count them as they are my small brothers when we sing together in the same house. I know that we came from a different family, but they are all my brothers. <laughs> I became a choir boy because I used to love singing and Father Melatios, I learned everything from him. How to sing. Let us praise God who has risen from the dead for he took upon himself soul and body. He was also one of my inspiration because he was the one who also supported me and gave me love. I was greatly surprised when I first heard the children chanting Christos Anesti at Easter of by heart. And I was even more surprised when I heard them singing the traditional New Year carols in Greek. And they hadn't learned them from a Greek person, but from Sister Anisia, who is a local Fijian born nun. She is the one who has taught them to chant in Greek. These young children are, are very keen to come and learn what we do in church, as they smell, as they hear, and they, what they say, and what they taste. They are learning very quickly in regards to chanting, in regards to coming to the priest for receiving Holy Communion, and what they do there in the Holy Altar as uh, altar boys. So Father Bartholomew was uh, the first uh, Fijian priest, but he was also the first uh, Fijian Orthodox. He was baptized with his uh, wife in uh, St. Paraskevi in San Beto, and uh, uh, soon after they went uh, to Greece with Yeronda and he was ordained there. And um, he remained as a proto presbyter and a leading priest in Fiji till today. Before I became an Orthodox priest, I was in the military, Fiji, Fiji Army, for like 34 years. Since 2008, I met with the Archbishop at my home in uh, Lautoka, Fiji. Actually, it's through my wife. They met at the one of the orphanages. Και αυτή λοιπόν η Λουίζα έδειξε ιδιαίτερο ενδιαφέρον. Μάλιστα με ασπάστηκε κιόλα. Και μου λέει: Εγώ θα ακολουθήσω τη θρησκεία σου, την Ορθοδοξία. My wife and uh, one of her friends uh, decided to, to make a dinner at my home so that we can invite uh, the Archbishop. He said to me: You read this pamphlet. I will pray for you. When you make up your mind, then come over to me. I will be waiting in San Beto, St. Paraskevi. It took me three months. I told my wife, darling, I want to tell you something. What I've been reading, is working inside me. I want to, to, to go to the Archbishop for him to baptize me so that I can help him in carrying out the work in Fiji. 
and he sa- says, he told me, yeah, let's go. Then off we go to St. Paraskevi. I saw him sitting down outside at the table writing letters. You know, he's telling the outside world that we've started orthodoxy in Fiji. As, I, as soon as I approached him, I kissed his hand. I told him, sir, please baptize me. I'm willing to be baptized. And from there I saw his tears coming out from his eyes and he said again, Thoks a toteo. In San Beto, in the main island Vitilevo, the first building was purchased and established as the mission center, Il Apostolico Centro. The first liturgies were served there and the first baptisms were done there. Soon after, in the same year, 2009, the small chapel of St. Paraskevi was built and the liturgies were served there for the first uh, Fijian Orthodox uh, people. But today uh, it remains as the main, as you would say, a headquarter of the apostolic ministry. It's also a place where, the, where we receive uh, the guests uh, who are coming to help and support the mission. My daily work here is to look after the St. Paraskevi Church, to light the candle, to pray, most important, and to keep the place clean, house up to date. So if we have visitors coming, they can always stay with us. And uh, most important, to be a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ here, to be an example of our Holy Fathers. Kiri Shu Christi Ileishon Metan Martalo. For they wish we got their patience that with their fasting, where neither moth nor rust on you. I've learned orthodoxy at Mount Athos, and I praise God for that. A few years after, we bought another piece of land closer to the main uh, city of the western uh, region of uh, Vitilevo. And first, uh, the small monastery was established, dedicated to the dormition of the Theotokos. Uh, there, the service was served regularly on every Sunday and the parish was gathering there. But the largest uh, church uh, in Vitilevu uh, was built just down below the monastery uh, dedicated to Holy Trinity. It took uh, some time to finish it, uh, but now it's the main parish and a cathedral church of uh, Fiji Islands. In Fiji, Greek Orthodox is uh, spreading. A uh, lot of people are interested to join us. Only thing is we have to go to them, bring them in to come. It is a little difficult. Well, nothing is hard with the Lord, uh, but it is a little difficult because uh, Orthodoxy came to Fiji very late. We just eight or nine years old. Give time, the Lord will fill the churches.
After baptism, I was sent to New Zealand for my ordination as a priest. When I spent about three years, I had a training in New Zealand with Father Meletius. I had a problem with my eyes because of diabetes from last two years. We have seen doctors here in Fiji, but uh, they said we cannot treat this and I have to go to abroad for uh, surgery. At the moment, uh, it's getting better. Siga, siga, slowly, slowly. I feel good. I'm happy. And I'm saving with the Orthodox Church here in Fiji. It was 2010 in April 12th, the Saturday morning, uh, when Eronda came with Sister Gerber to use the internet shop. And Eronda was proud. He said, what time you'll be knocking off? I said, one o'clock. And he sit outside the cafe here, waiting for me. So I came outside, and uh, he was chatting to some guy, and he called me up. He said, uh, Sister Gabriel said, can you ask this man if he wants to become a priest? And I just looked at the bishop shop, and I said, I asked, come again? I said, uh, you just met him. And I was, I was embarrassed to tell you the truth. I didn't know what to say. So I did my duty and I asked him. Father, when I was with Maria, I want to become Orthodox, to become a priest. And I just said, are you joking? <laughs> he was a holy man, you know. He, by the look, he was a very holy, and he know that he will be changing me my life and my family. So I went to Thessaloniki, where I was ordained as a priest. In 2012, I came back again to Lombasa, where I start my divine liturgy with my people. In the second large island of Fiji, Vanua Levu, uh, in town Lombasa, uh, we have uh, the simple uh, church dedicated to Saint Nicholas and Saint Athanasius. My parish, uh, what I say, is over 150 people. Over 150 people are baptized, and I. I hope I'll get more people to be baptized. When I got chanters, simple chanters, we chant some Greek too. I got my wife, Presbytera. And on Sundays, we bring people, we taking about from here, travel about 30 kilometers to bring people. I, our van is doing three trips and car is doing five trips to bring people. I start at quarter past five in the morning. Quarter past eight, we start our divine liturgy. And but quarter past nine, we finish divine liturgy. And I love the people. Father Varnavas, together with his presbytera, very dedicated uh, people, uh, took very seriously Christianity, Orthodoxy, Church, priesthood, and he's giving uh, literally his life for the people uh, there in, in Lobasa.
Son of God, receive me today as a community. Yeah, I'm uh, looking after two others apart from my children, taking care of Nicholas and Agapitos. Agapito is a school student who the parents have uh, thrown, thrown him out from the house. So we have accepted him. And another one is uh, Nicholas. We are also taking care of him. I'm just like a mother of them. Thank you. Have a nice meal. Welcome. And they also help me in everything, inside the house, outside the house, the compound. We also doing planting, uh, vegetables, things like that. So they both help us. When I first came to the church, like everything was new to me. He taught me how to chant the rhythms, he taught me like where to hold the songs, the chants, normal words. And appear to my acquaintances, they that saw me without fled from me. I am forgotten by the heart, like a dead man. I am become like a broken vessel. Still she helps me and this father also helping me. He, they guide me. They never yell at me or anything, they always tell me politely. Make, they make me laugh, jokes. Daytime I'm don't stay home. I'm visiting people, I'm going around, visit especially poor people. I love them. I never say no to anyone. I go with food. They can't feed themselves. They're not eating meat at all. They can't afford to buy. I'm doing what God has taught me. What our Yeranda has taught me. He's a holy man too, I say. He's a very, very patient, peaceful man. And we can see miracles every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. But first of all, my son is very sick. My son is very sick. We went to hospital. The doctor checked. The doctor said no. We can't get any anything. Oh. What is no the sickness problem. or yeah. what? Eh? My car. Uh, accident. He accident the car. Uh, then we put the, we the give the car in one garage. The boss of that garage asking about the son. How's your son? Then my husband said, No, it's not okay. The garage owner said, uh, 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 You can you you can take your son to one of chase their whole auto dogs. So I said, Okay, let me take my son there. When sun heal and we very happy, too much happy. Right? We have plenty of members now coming. Some if, sometimes even the church members have to stay outside where we have built a small shed. I think in future we might have a bigger church where we have a good facilities for people to go and eat, a uh, rest room for children, something like that. So, hope to have a better church and a bigger one in future. I wasn't expecting that, uh, to be chosen one of the three boys to go to Greece and also to come back to serve the Orthodox Church here in Fiji. But it was really a great honor and also I was nervous because the country is really far, far from Fiji. 
I was raised in a single parent family. Uh, my mom and my dad got divorced when I was eight years old. And so we came to this church 10 years ago and we had an opportunity to stay here. Well, Moses, who is 18 now. There's Vasily, who is 15, and Gabriel, also 15. Uh, I've known them since they were about four, well, especially Vasily. Four, Moses was probably five, six. I've known from a young age, so I, I'm emotional when I talk about them, because I know what they've been through, too. Yeah. Sister Gabriel, he had a meeting with the London Focus and told that if I could go to Greece too. So just when Father Miletius came, he told us that we'll be going there soon, maybe in two, three weeks time. So I was really, I was really happy. That was like the most exciting day in my life. Now they're here in Athens, they're very happy. They've never been outside of Fiji. And I'm so happy for them because they can now, through their experiences, they can pass that on to the others. And also, like I told them, it opens doors for the others there. Yerondan Philokius plans on taking them to a school, whether it's uh, Patmos or Mount Athos, so they can learn something. What's your name? Moses. Gabriel. Gabriel. And? Vasilios. Obviously, schooling is the most important part that they continue. They're still young. Arjeronda was brought up in Patmiada school in Patmos and uh, he was sent there from his uh, village to, to learn about Christ, to learn about the church. And then he probably didn't dream about this, what was happening in the Pacific decades after. So these three boys are sent back to the same school uh, to learn about Christ, about church, about life, uh, to gain a uh, new experience, to be able with that experience and knowledge that they will gain to come back and support uh, people uh, in the islands and the church. In the islands uh, of Tonga and, and Samoa as well, the mission is growing. Uh, there we are at the first steps. In Tonga we have um, a small chapel dedicated to St. Uh, Peter and Paul. And uh, till the end of the year we are to finish the big church of St. George. When I was asked by Archbishop Philokius to go to Tonga, we didn't have anything there. We didn't have any contacts there. We didn't have any beginning place. And you know, we never knew who we were going to meet and how things were going to proceed. But the Archbishop had a great faith that whoever we met was the one God had sent. The Archbishop Amphilochus seemed to have a way of finding money that no one really could ever understand or anticipate. It was God's work, not his work, and that if he had faith, God would provide. If we had a full-time priest there, we would have a very thriving church. We don't have it yet. 
But we, even that little bit of time that we spent there, the Archbishop found uh, 10 people who were willing to be baptized. I think that this building in the Church of St. George is about four years old now. So I think in 2015 we began to make the plans to build it. It's about 80% constructed now, and, and we have kind of stalled at this point. We're, we're not able to go forward, but we are raising, we had, did raise some money. This past uh, uh, July, I was in the United States, and we raised about $20,000 there. We're going to finish it. We're going to put doors on it. We're going to put windows on it. We're going to seal it up so that it's, it, you know, somehow protected from the elements. And God somewhere has a person prepared for us. We don't know who it is yet. We really believe in uh, this idea that, that is to say, the Archbishop Amphilochius and now the Archbishop Miron, that we need indigenous clergy. We just need someone who's kind and, and humble. I was interviewed in the United States over a year ago, and a young man in Alaska, of all places, heard the interview, and so he con contacted the Archdiocese and said, I'd like to come and help. And he did come, and he did help, and, uh, and he wants to come back with a team from Alaska to help us build this church. You know, so we'll see. We'll see what God brings. It, it, it'll be a surprise to all of us. <laughs> uh, in Samoa, we have the land, just working now on the plans of the first uh, mission center there. Uh, my relationship with Sa Samoa started in 1984 uh, when I was uh, in primary school. Uh, I met a young guy there, a young boy, and we became best friends. And through life, we became brothers. Uh, and through that relationship, God blessed us many years later to be able to have uh, Sophia, our second daughter, Presbytera Michelle and I. She was adopted from Samoa. We moved from Australia to New Zealand, and there we met Yeronda uh, Amphilochio shortly after Easter in 2017. And that meeting was the beginning of an enormous change in my life. He also invited me in that first meeting, one minute after meeting him, to travel with him to Samoa. Just to Samoa, Pira me copa do Pagayene, e Ecclesia to Ayu Yohanna to Theolo. In a panemor fatanesiafta, Kali anthropi, Prothimi dektiki, Kelpizo di Orthodoxia. We were traveling in Samoa uh, and I was able to observe how he engaged with people. Uh, he didn't speak Samoan, they didn't speak Greek, and yet he found a way to connect with people. Uh, they, they understood him in a way that is hard to describe. I'm heading back there in two weeks to start excavations on that block, surveying the block so that we can begin plans to build the missionary headquarters in Samoa. People come to us, uh, we meet people, uh, and through that process we start to share with them. And for some people, uh, that sharing, it, it touches their hearts. We travelled to Samoa for the first time with His Eminence uh, Miron and Father Meletios, and there we were able to meet with uh, representatives from the Samoan government. Oh, oh, good morning, Archers. Main reason I am very excited and very interesting into uh, learning more about Orthodox uh, here in Samoa. And I am happy that uh, you are planning to uh, build a church here so we can cooperate in a way so that uh, we will. Uh, and make the, uh, the project uh, a reality. Uh, this is the first time that uh, we have been connected uh, straight to uh, the people from the coming from, from Greece, which is through the, the, the Orthodox Church. And I can see that there's quite a lot of uh, programs that we can interact and uh, like the culture as well. And I hope that uh, we can learn more to have the exchange in teaching a uh, uh, prospect, uh, exchange of students in a higher level, exchange of, of, of uh, culture advice. So it's it's very interesting the way I look at it. Uh, in Samoa, as well as in Tonga, we need more than anything to have people who will 
uh, embrace orthodoxy and help us to, to work on building the community. Because the church is community, it's not the work of one person or of uh, certain institution. It's not uh, the work that happens uh, with money, but it's the work of the Holy Spirit through the people who have love of Christ in them, and then everything comes in its place. I came to New Zealand in September 2018, and in October of the same year, I visited Fiji for the first time. As soon as I arrived in Fiji, I saw the large missionary project that had been established by Yeronda Sanfilochius. We travel to the Pacific Islands as often as we can, and as often as we can afford. Every time we travel, we take a suitcase of papers and problems to solve. But seeing in the smiles and eyes of the children the presence of God, it's worth it. The social welfare, the main office is in Suva. Every month, we take our time out to meet them, to talk with the director, to talk with, with the ladies, they are the SWOs, the social welfare officers, uh, to talk about the home. What is the importance uh, for the child? Every year we visit the homes uh, and uh, see you know, the standards. Uh, and if there is you know, need for us to assist, come to assist in the area of funding. Uh, government helps, you know, with the homes uh, in trying to help them to comply with the standards. But uh, we know there's a lot of love and care that is uh, given to the children in these homes. Because we have a baby, they help us with uh, the milk, the diapers. That's that's what I ask them, and they are doing that, and it's uh, appreciated. The aim of uh, the apostolic ministry there in the islands is maybe threefold, to build the churches and other buildings, to build communities and to build lives. We want to give to as many people as possible the ability to improve their lives and in the core of that improvement to seek and find the presence of God in their lives. We did a few projects after the hurricanes when we were delivering uh, help to everyone who was in need. Our priests go in the houses and read the prayers uh, for everyone who would ask them and open the doors for every, everyone in need. Our plans for the future are to go one step further, if that's the will of God. We plan to build a school for the children and hopefully a medical center as well. I actually met Sebas Mjoda de Miron in Melbourne. You know, they had a function, a fundraiser for the orphanage. In Coburg, Melbourne. At Coburg, Melbourne. So, you know, and, and having already met Father Meladio, so there was a bit of a connection there. So he was telling me about a project that they, you know, they wanted to, his vision here is to further educate the children, be able to be self-sufficient, not always depending on um, let's not call donations, support, and all that's important and we need that. But more for the kids to be able to get to a stage where they're 18, 19 and they're self-sufficient to get out in the world and stand on their own feet and um, earn, earn an honest income. And the kids are absolutely beautiful. Like to see them smile, to see them, you know, open their arms and, and just come and hug us and come and kiss us good morning and just play with them, just to see their happiness. And even though there's a lot of uh, poverty, a lot of sacrifices from the kids, irrespective, they are the most beautiful, the most happiest kids I have ever come across and absolutely love them and the sisters and the fathers and the archbishop and everybody that comes here and helps it's 
it's not helping them, they're actually helping us. Γέροντα Αμφιλόχιο came from the island of Rhodos, having studied theology and having been the spiritual child of Saint Αμφιλόχιο Μακρύ, who in turn was a spiritual child of Saint Nectario of Pentapolis, the miracle worker. And so there is a saintly line of succession which leads to Γέροντας Αμφιλόχιος. And every day we see the works of his love, his heart, we see the works of God. From the bottom of my heart, I'd like to thank His Eminence Metropolitan Amphilochios for everything he did for the souls of people, for the way in which he worked in the vineyard of our Lord, for the impact he had on the lives of us all. We are going there uh, to visit family, to be with them, to support them. Whatever one would do for uh, his family, that's uh, what we are trying to do there. Many obligations because of the lack of people on the field, from the smallest uh, jobs, uh, fixing the car, changing the oil, cutting the grass, paying the bills, to a little bit more serious and more sensitive things. It's uh, like with de dealing with people, spiritual guidance, Father Meritus is really close to me because in my life he plays a role of maybe one of my best uncle or something. And uh, I really want to thank him that uh, he helped me a lot in my life. I do have faith in God that uh, we, are, we won't get that difficult time. No. There'll be always somebody standing there to help us out. Yes. My dream or my plan, which I want to be when I grow up, is I want to become a doctor. Uh, help the sick people and um, help small children who are sick. My dream is to become a vet, for a doctor for the animals. I love animals so much, so... I really want to go for an uh, aircraft engineer. But you have, you know, people coming all the way from Greece and setting up this, you know, these uh, institutions and wanting to help the people of Fiji and the children of Fiji. And I think we are very appreciative of that, you know. Even though we have different approaches and different, you know, ceremonies and rituals, but it's one God. Then Borume. Δεν έχουμε το δικαίωμα πια να ξεκινάμε ένα έργο, να εμπιστεύονται άνθρωποι την ψυχή τους, τη σωτηρία της ψυχής τους στην Εκκλησία μας και εμείς να μην μπορούμε να ανταποκριθούμε. Αυτή είναι η μεγάλη ευθύνη πλέον που έχουμε στα χέρια μας. We need support of everyone far away in Greece closer here in Australia and New Zealand and of course of the local people in the islands. The church is built for them to be theirs but in order that they can embrace it and have it as their own uh, we need to be there and to provide that love of Christ. Uh, the church is not to be uh, one place that will come and gather on Sundays and pray but it's the way of life.
If I wasn't joining this Orthodox Church, uh, my life would be different. Once, once I entered the gate, I felt that something is in the church, like something holy. I, I, I can feel it. I'm now an Orthodox priest. So here am I for the Fijian people to know that Orthodoxy is now alive in Fiji. I was taught by our Eronda and Philokis, we love everyone. We pray for everyone. We plant the seeds and he'll bear the fruits. Now fruit is coming. People come to church now. Plenty people here. It's coming on Sunday. And I love it. Πιστεύω ότι θα συνεχιστεί το έργο και θα αυξηθεί. Από αυτά που έγιναν θα γίνουν και άλλα και περισσότερα. Και όλα θα πάνε καλά.